Howdy everyone, welcome back to part three of my 2020 aero build using the ranch ferry method. So if you haven't seen part two already, I'd go ahead and pause this and go back to part two so you can see how I found my hand load. In this part, we're gonna go ahead and start building our arrows and we're gonna be doing some insert tuning in the beginning stages of knock tuning as well. So as you can see here, I went ahead and purchased the Beeman ICS Wideout 340 arrows. So I got a dozen of those. I purchased the Ethics Archery adjustable static inserts, and so that looks like these. So you can adjust them. They go from 125 to 200 grains. And with the arrows, I got 12 of these Easton Knox. as well as 12 as the Easton standard inserts. So one thing I realized when I got these inserts was they weigh 21 grains. I had decided that I wanted my point weight to be 300. However, when you do the math, 300 plus the standard insert that was an error, I'm pretty close to 325. My fill points are gonna be 125. My broadheads are gonna be 125. So instead of using only 175 grains on the insert. I'm gonna use all 200. That way I can get my weight up to the same weight that my test arrow was at. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna try and find my straightest arrows and rank them from one to 12. Just as a good starting point, what I typically like to do is I have my one through six arrows I'll use as my hunting arrows, and then my seven through 12 arrows will be more of my field tip and practice arrows. To test how straight they are, I use this arrow spinner tool. You can buy this on the Amazon, I think it's like 20, 25 bucks. It's pretty helpful because it gives you a good idea of how straight your arrow is up front without having to put the insert in and try and spin it any other way. So you can see when I spin this arrow, this one seems to be jumping around a little bit. It's probably one of the worst arrows so far that I've seen in this package. Again, you're not gonna get 12 perfect arrows, so you're just trying to find your best arrows and just rank them out so that you can at least have a good starting point. So again, there wasn't a real science to spinning the arrows there. I'm just trying to find the six best right off the bat you know, when you start tuning and you start doing some of your broadhead and, and paper tuning stuff, you may end up moving them around and taking, you know, five through nine or whatever they are, you know, so I, it's just, to me, it's a good starting point. I might as well do it. It's not that difficult, but if you don't have a spinner available or something like that, I would just name them one through 12 off the bat so that you can keep them all in the same order. Once you have all 12, what you want to do is you're going to go ahead and just label them somewhere on the shaft. So I'll go ahead and label those now. So the next thing that I like to do is I want to go ahead and square off both ends of the shaft. I kind of already showed you how to do that in part one of this video. I'll go through it again real quick though. So I use the Fast Arrow Square by Luminoc. It has a little piece of sandpaper here on the end and you just rest the arrow in it and spin it so what you'll want to do is you'll take a Sharpie and you'll just mark on the edge of the shaft. You can go ahead and mark both sides, but you might as well square both sides up. And so what this does is it kind of gives you a little shiny, you know, a little shiny end here on the side. So you have a good idea of when you've completely gotten rid of the Sharpie that your arrow is square. And you'll just kind of put it in there and twist it. And you'll want to do that till the Sharpie is completely gone. So you probably can't see it, but it's no longer on the edge there. So we'll do the other side. Another way to test to make sure you think it's square is go ahead and put your insert in there and you can kind of just look around the edges and make sure that it sits flush with your shaft. And so you'll go ahead and repeat this for all 12 arrows. Now that we've squared all of our shafts off on both sides, 
What I like to do is I like to weigh all my components. I want my arrows to be within about four to five grains of each other. That just gets you the maximum consistency on each arrow. So I've actually created a little sheet here and it has all the components that I typically use listed and you just can write in the weight. I did this on Excel. And so the way I set it up is I can go in there and I just type in all the weights of each item. And then I order it from smallest to largest on each one. And it'll automatically calculate which pieces should go together to get me the you know similar weight on all the arrows. And so I'm going to go ahead and start weighing all of my components. So to weigh them, I just bought this AWS grain scale here. It's pretty simple, basic. You know, you can buy a little holder to hold your arrow. I didn't think that was worth it. I can just set the arrow on it and balance it, and that tends to work just fine. So after weighing the shafts, I have weights from 242.9 all the way to 244.9. So that's a two grain difference. And so you can see why you really want to try and get everything to match up to try and keep each arrow kind of within two to three grains of each other. So now I'll go ahead and weigh the inserts. So one thing I'd like to mention here is to start, I usually only do the shaft and the insert weight together. That's the stuff you're going to be gluing. And so I want to make sure I get those as close as possible. And then depending on if you're going to use Luminox or whatever knock you're going to use, you're going to want to weigh those as well and decide, you know, which knock goes with which set of arrow and insert. And so you can kind of see here, my first set of math is the shaft plus the insert, and I'll add on the knock, the fletching, and the point weight, and then the total at the end. The reason I group here the shaft and insert is because you're gluing the insert into the shaft. So you want to make sure you start with that. And your knocks can always change. Your point weight can always change. If you're going to be using feathers or veins and not a 3D printed fletching, you probably go ahead and add your fletching weight into that as well. For these arrows, I plan on using zinger fletchings. And I'll get into that a little bit later. So I went ahead and I put in all the information. I typed it into my spreadsheet there. So I have the, the shaft, the knock, and the inserts weight 1 through 12 in here. What I basically am doing is I'm just taking you know the lightest arrow and putting it with the heaviest insert and then I calculate that and then I'm taking the combination of the shaft and the insert and I'm taking the lightest one putting out with the heaviest knock and so on and so forth. And so so with these three items here, what it spat out for me was 456.8 is the lightest arrow, and the heaviest is 457.1. So with only these three items, I'm within three grains already. And when I dive into the weight of the fletchings as well as the weight of the tip, we could probably get it a little bit closer even. So given this information, I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the shaft with the correct insert and knock. Now that I have all my components, my insert, my knock, and my shaft all put together, I'm going to start the insert tuning process. And so to do this, I have six broadheads here, and I'm going to associate these six with arrows one through six, because I think those are going to be my six hunting arrows. And so I'll insert tune those six to my first six arrows and then arrows 7 through 12. If you don't have 12 broadheads like me, what you can do is I'm going to insert tune 1 through 6 again but with 7 through 12 if that makes sense. I'm using the Magnus Stinger buzz cut as you can see here. These are pretty sharp out of the box so make sure you're careful when you're installing these. I actually have a boning broadhead installer here that I'm going to use to screw on the broadheads here so I don't cut myself. So as you can see I don't have the insert installed yet. I'm going to be insert tuning this arrow by spinning it again either on your spinner or you can do this on a table if you have a wood table like this so you may want to put down a piece of wood or plastic hard plastic so that you don't cut up your table. 
So what you're looking for here is you want a perfect spin on your broadhead. And so what the Ranch Ferry shows in his videos is you can spin your insert a quarter turn and it would start wobbling just a little bit. And again, it's very slight. Even the slightest wobble on an arrow like this can get you about two inches off or more down at about 20 yards. So what I like to do is get something like a piece of wood here and I'll put a dot on it at the point. And then you just line up your broadhead here. And when you spin, you just kind of watch. You, know, you can see that it's just rotating around that. It's not actually staying in the center. So this is not really aligned all that great. So I'll rotate, then insert a little bit, and try again. So you can see here, this is pretty perfect. You know, it's not wobbling much at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Sharpie and you wanna mark the insert and the shaft so you know where it lines up. And so let me rotate that 180 degrees so you can just see. I don't know if you can tell, but it does wobble a little bit when you rotate it, but this arrow I think is pretty straight here and so is the broadhead. Now that I have everything insert tuned here, I've got a mark here on all my arrows that lines up with the inserts. I'm gonna start preparing these shafts for gluing the inserts in. I went over this in the part one video and I'll show you all briefly again how I do it here on one of these shafts and then I'll do it for all 12 and I'll show you all how I glue it in as well. So what I like to do is score the inside of the shaft. And so I just use a cleaning brush from my gun kit. And I just run it in and out of the shaft here. And I'll spin it around just to kind of make sure it gets a nice good score on the shaft. The next thing I like to do is take some alcohol here and you'll want to clean all that carbon dust from inside the shaft. So I'll get some Q-tips and I'll dip it in the alcohol. I'll just run it along the inside of the shaft here and you can kind of see all the dirt that comes off of it and all the carbon dust. When you're doing this you want to make sure you're careful that you don't scrape off your mark on your insert tuning. The reason behind doing this is if you start using epoxy and you have a bunch of carbon dust in there, it'll just start cracking the epoxy and eventually it'll fail. You'll do this until your Q-tip comes out clean. All right, so now we have all of our arrows scored and cleaned and ready for glue. We'll go ahead and get the epoxy ready. So I use the uh, Golf Works shafting epoxy. This is a two part, 24 hour epoxy. So you wanna make sure that you get an equal two parts here. You can take a toothpick or a popsicle stick to just kinda of stir it up nicely here. What I like to do also is just spin it again to make sure even with the glue added that it still seems to be spinning straight. So I'll attach the broadhead onto the insert. And you'll just put a thin line down one side. And then I'll rotate it 180 degrees and do the same thing. And so when you start putting the shaft on, 
I'll spin it as I push it slowly on here and that'll just distribute the glue a little bit better. And you may have some excess runoff like I do here. You can just wipe that off with a towel. And so you'll line up your lines there. And you'll just spin it to make sure it's still good. It looks good still. So I'm gonna wipe off the rest of this glue. And so you'll do the same thing on the remainder of your arrows. It's been about 24 hours now. Our epoxy should be nice and dry. We should be able to start doing some knock tuning. What I'm gonna do first, and I kinda of went through this in my part one video, but I'm gonna use my little spine thingamajig here and try and figure out where the strongest part of the spine is. That way I kind of have a good starting point to knock tuning. If you don't have this, it's not a big deal. You can just go right into the knock tuning process. I'm kind of curious how well this actually works. So during this process, I'm gonna mark the shaft based on what this shows. And then when I get out to the field and start shooting and actually knock tuning, we'll see where I end up with the knock and kind of just compare on how well this actually works. So what you do is you put your shaft in here and then you'll zero it out. You take this two pound weight So what you're gonna do is you just start spinning the shaft. And as you spin the shaft, you'll see your marker kind of move to the left or the right here as it gets stronger and weaker. And so what you'll do is you'll just spin it until you find the strongest side of the shaft. So now that I find the strongest side of the shaft, I'm gonna take a Sharpie and mark up here towards the knock. So you can see I've marked where I think the strongest side of the shaft is. So you'll take your knock. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a little edge on one of the sides. And what you want to do is you have that edge facing towards you. So here's my mark. The edge is over here. And so what you want, basically, that's going to be the top of your arrow when you shoot it. So when you fletch this, this would be, if you're shooting three fletch, this would be your cock vein straight up here off this mark. Or if you're shooting four fletch, it'd come out and that would be in the middle of your two marks. I've got all 12 of my arrows pre knock tuned is what I'll call it. One thing I wanted to talk about before I went out and started knock tuning while I was sitting here, I want to talk a little bit about fletchings. Um, so I spent quite a bit of money. I went out and bought the boning fletching jig. I bought some fletching tape. I bought fletching glue. I went through the process. You know, the tape didn't seem to work all that well. It didn't stick great for me personally. I'm sure I was doing something wrong with it. Um, the glue stuck pretty well, but it was still kind of tough to get a good helical or offset on it. And I, I fletched about six arrows myself yeah, and here's one of them um, and some of the issues I had it was just excess glue and you know it, it seemed like I was still getting you, know, you can kind of see some of the marks on the fletchings here from when I was hitting the cables with it and so then I found out about the zinger fletchings which are 3D printed fletchings here I'll pull one off so this is a four fletch. They make a three and a four fletch. They do left and right offset. And so I actually did some testing with that and I'll show you a picture. I, I did a couple groupings and compared to my homemade fletchings versus the Zinger, I was grouping a lot better with the Zinger fletchings. Now that could just be because, you know, I was doing these myself and it had been my first six to 12 arrows that I had fletched. But I just figured 
for as a beginner, why spend the extra money to fletch them yourself, buy all the equipment when you can buy the Zinger fletchings and they work just as good. They slide right on. It allows you to pull it off so you can still bear shaft again. There's no glue. I haven't had any issues with them moving or, or pulling off on a drop away rest. I haven't tested with the whisker biscuit, but I've heard that it doesn't have any issues with that. And when you shoot a pass through through a deer or another animal, it'll the fletching will drop off and basically it'll get, it marks the location of where you hit the deer. So I thought that was kind of cool. Now, if you're good at fletching and you already have the equipment or you're getting arrows that are pre-fledged like this one, the first one I had, then maybe they end up doing a little bit better because somebody that's experienced is doing them. But my guess is the issues I was having was just kind of the, the excess glue and stuff like that just kind of changed the weight and how it flew a little bit. So my opinion as a beginner would be if you're just doing this for hunting and you're trying to get a good arrow that flies well, I would just do the zinger fletchings, I think, for the price and for the ease of use, that's just the best way to do it. I've seen quite a few other reviews from experienced archist, archist, archeryist, from other experienced archery guys, and they haven't done a ton of testing on it, but they did say that it seems to hit in the same spot of the, as their other arrows and they would have no problem using them. So that's just my opinion. And whether you want to do a left offset or right offset, you know, a lot of people talk about this and I figured why not go through it? You know, there's people that say it doesn't matter. There's people that say it does. So I figured, you know, it's pretty easy to test which way your arrow is turning as it comes out of the bow. And I'll show you all a video of how I do that as well. I think I had read somewhere that 75 or 80 percent of bows are a left turn so you'd want a left offset and i think that's just based on the way the cables are twisted is what i was reading but people tend to do a right offset because when they shoot they have issues with the left offset untwisting the field tip or your broad head i haven't had much experiences with that so i can't really comment on whether it's a big deal or not I was doing right offset for my first set of arrows I did and for the ones I had originally purchased for right offset. For these, I clocked my bow and realized that I had a left twist out of the bow so I didn't want to fight against that. So I did a six degree left offset and I actually bought uh, six that were four fletch and six that were three fletch just to kind of test and see if these arrows shoot better with one or the other. And I'll end up just picking one of them and going with that for this season and see how well it works. So that's just, again, my opinion on, on what I think about fletching. You know, I, I think, you know, you can spend a lot of money and pay somebody to do it, or you can spend a lot of money and buy the equipment to do it. But using something like these Zinger fletchings, to me, is just a no-brainer. So that's what I'll be using this season, and we'll see how well they work. So that concludes part three of this series. In the next video, I'll show you how I clock the arrows to decide whether I want a left or right offset on the fletchings. I will knock tune a couple arrows to show you how I do that as well. I'll talk about whether this pre knock tuning device that I'm using actually is working or how close it actually gets to what I'm getting out in the field. As always, I appreciate y'all tuning in for this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see y'all next week.